The Bible says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay, so let's break this down, since this is word by word, verse by verse, so you can understand every word that you're reading. Among whom also... So who is the among whom? It's, remember the context of verse 2, children of disobedience. Those were lost sinners. So among those lost sinners, also we, so meaning it includes us, including us, all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. Our conversation in our past times, in our past lives, when we were lost in sin like the children of disobedience, the conversation followed the lust of our flesh. It wasn't godly, it wasn't spiritual, it was all fleshly, it was all wicked. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. See, everything we talked about, it was according to lust. This lust follows what? It satisfies how our flesh feels. It satisfies how our mind thinks. A lot of times uh, your mind and your flesh are wicked instruments that you use for sin. So that's what we did in our lost, when we were lost sinners. You might recall that. And then when you got saved, you start to realize, wow, there's a lot of things to change now. There's a lot of sins that are ungodly and wrong. And some of them you didn't even know were ungodly and wrong. And for some of you, it took years to finally overcome it. Notice here, and we're by nature the children of wrath. So notice over here that nature, this is a law of nature. A law of nature is we are all sinners. Now that's something that the world will never comprehend. Now the, the key problem with psychology is that they keep making where deep inside mankind they're actually good human people. So no, that is not true. By nature, mankind is not good. By nature, man is evil. Now, Romans chapter 2, you can write that one down too, or you can turn over there. That way we can understand the context. So, I took master's level study on psychology and counseling. So, I understand their mindset. I mean, a lot of things is helpful to people, but you got to realize this. One, you'd be surprised that there are branches in psychology that are actually not empirical science. Yet, why do they do it anyway? The reason why they do it is because it matters how the client feels. That's the point of psychology. That's what they're looking at, even though it's not scientific, some of them. Uh, another thing is that they're looking at one part of human nature, not the full part of human nature. The full completeness of human nature is that one we have a conscience. Now that's something Calvinists do not believe in. They think that once you're a lost sinner, you're totally depraved. That's right. part of tulip, total depravity. But they don't realize that, no, even wicked sinners do good things. See, that's where psychology uh, kicks in all those good points. But for crying out loud, you're talking to some people who are just uh, there for life, lifers, and then you give them all the counseling psychology, they just laugh at you. So, what they underestimate is the wickedness of human nature. So, by nature, we consist of two parts. That's what psychology does, underestimates. That's what they fail to realize. So, in this walk of life, what we are is the children of wrath, even as others. So, even as others, meaning lost people, obviously. Lost people. So, look at Romans 2. We do admit there is a conscience, and that's what the psychologists are hitting at. Psychology is study of the soul. See, because the word psych is actually not an English word. It came from the Greek word, suke, or... It means soul. And then ology is simply study of. So it's a study of the soul. Why? Because the soul, it contains this instrument. Conscience, mind, etc. 
thinking, feeling, etc., etc. So they are right about the good parts of human nature. We don't deny that. Everyone has some sort of conscience, but you got to realize this. You can, through your free choice, you can keep defiling the conscience. That's why we keep insisting that homosexuality is not birth, it is choice. Because everyone in, innate within them a conscience, they make choices that keep defiling it. Because they underestimate another side here, and that's your flesh is really wicked. So the more choice, so you choose either good or evil. I mean, even psychologists realize that there's a e ego, id, and etc. So because they recognize that part, they should know better. They should know better. So there are no doubts certain parts in our nature. But see, they keep thinking that there's something good, there's something good, let's work it out, let's work it out. But see, by free choice, they underestimate that. They don't understand that. This debunks both Calvinism and secular psychology powerfully is free choice. They don't understand the importance of that. Free choice, yes, there might be something good in a human being. Believe it or not, okay, this might be hard for some of you to swallow, especially onliners who are really mad about the governmental system, but our government leaders in power, they do have a conscience and good intention where they want to benefit human society. I know that's hard to believe, but they do. They genuinely do have that because they have a conscience. However, they have a wicked part in their nature. That's what justifies them. So when they keep committing acts of wickedness, because they have a conscience in them, they use a free choice to keep justifying their wickedness so that they can look like good people. Do you understand that now? That makes a lot more sense what's wrong with psychology and what's wrong with people and why Pastor Kim is so mean in calling out different preachers and even Christians who are loving people, so I don't understand, Pastor, why you criticize them. Well, the thing is this, they overlook human wickedness. Sure, those same people have conscience, they do a lot of good things, but it's their free choice that's in between this process. Do you understand that? Amen. It's between this process. Free choice chooses this guy or this guy. And let's be honest, what does mankind tend to lean more toward? So what happens to this guy? It dies down. Now let's go back to our text here. Romans chapter 2. Let's understand this conscience thing. The Bible says at verse 14, For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by what? See that? Nature consists that. We don't deny that. Human nature has a conscience. It has something good like psychologists are aiming for. The things contained of the law, these having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Now let's go back to uh, Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So remember, the key problem with psychology is that, sure, they are aiming for good parts of human nature and they see it work with clients, but in order to debunk them fully is you got to explain to them, well, don't your clients have to make free choices after all your suggestions? They have to make the free choice of following your suggestions, the tips. And not only that, I mean, for crying out loud, not every client is a 100% case. And psychologists know that. Therapists know that. A lot of them just mess up because of wickedness. All right, now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2. By nature, what? The children of wrath, even as others. Now notice this. Our nature is wickedness, and God calls this children of wrath. So, a lot of people don't realize that our very nature, even if they don't like it, you got to realize your nature is a child of the devil whether you like it or not. Amen. Whether you like it or not, you're a child of the devil, children of wrath. Now, notice it didn't say children of love. You notice that? Yeah. The next verses, you'll see love. But over here, you got to understand that God's saying, nature, we're made to be wrath. Did you understand that? Why were we made to be wrath? It, the reason why is because we're all born from Satan's 
fallen, uh, from Adam's fallen nature that was birthed from Satan himself. So all of us are born by nature with wickedness and God reserves that for wrath. So, then that means it makes so much sense. Why would God send the, if He's the God of love, why would He send people to hell? Simple, because you're not a child of love, you're a child of wrath. Yeah. So, when you're burning in hell forever, how can, an, how can God stomach a person screaming in torment forever and ever and ever, wailing and begging God to get him out, and how can God stomach that? Maybe even Hitler and Stalin wouldn't stomach that, perhaps. But why can God? Simple, because God, all, this is called what? Love or wrath? Wrath. wrath. So he, because he's 100% perfect, pure God in his attributes, he has to make it 100% wrath. If he's 99% wrath, then he is only 99% perfect in his attributes. But God is 100% perfect in all his attributes. With love, it has to be 100%, not 99%. With wrath as well, it has to be 100%, not 99%. Now, do you understand why God can stomach a person screaming, wailing in hell forever? Why? Because this is, when he says this is wrath, he means wrath. But when he says right over here that this place is love, then that means it is love. But see, a lot of people choose to reject the love of Jesus Christ. So the love of Jesus Christ is here at Calvary if you would so choose to receive it. It is so sad how many people choose to reject it though, isn't it? So this is your nature. And you're made to go there. But this is not where it's made where it violates your free choice. See, that's what Calvinists think. They think that because you're a vessel of wrath, that you're made to be that there's no free choice involved. No, you can get out of there if you so choose this. If you so choose this, then you don't have to be here.